Zoomen, hallo. Hey, what is up? Um, welcome. Thank you for uh, joining me in, uh, I guess, my uh, episode two of um, I don't have one today. Sorry, let me um, put this screen in like that, like Brian or Tim. So, <clears throat> if you guys can hear me, uh, let me know. Um, I'm trying out like a new audio thing set up, so it's it's. Uh, can you guys hear me now? Any better? Easier? Yes? No? I can hear you guys. Thanks. My mic is up. Hold on. Can you guys hear me? hearing some echo so hold on I'm trying out <coughs> a voice mirror like um, Z told me to but it's causing some issues where I can hear the echo so it's hard for me to talk because it's talking back right back to me in the delay um, hold on 
in the new mode. Put this up. There we go. Put this up. Turn the desk audio down. Can you guys hear me better? Is that worse or it's better? Okay, cool. Okay, so welcome. Um, I am, uh, I do have a book I was reading just before the setup, so it's right here. So if you guys want a cool book, uh, Gunther Rework 002, um, I believe by Ghost, um, is a, it's a pretty cool uh, read, as you guys saw last night on Mechanisms. If you guys were on Mechanisms, you should watch that. Uh, every Friday from, uh, supposed to be from, was it 10 Eastern till midnight? Uh, but usually that's, that's, that's subject to change. So, yeah. Uh, so anyway, welcome. So, uh, I guess we should, we should probably get right to it. Huh? Let's, let's do that. So let's switch cameras over. Hey, see that transition though, right? Right? Yeah? Okay, cool. All right, so <clears throat> let's get to the SD. Um, I know you guys have seen this a million times, but um, this is kind of, uh, the is not all nice, like, all primed, uh, first prime, uh, but you can see on the horn right here, I've been uh, kind of fixing kind of issues with the modifications that I applied to this thing. So, you know, stuff like um, inconsistencies in levels, and I'll, I'll show you guys like some, some bigger mistakes here in a sec. Uh, yeah, thank you, it's looking smooth, thank you. Uh, Kyle says, nice, thank you, man. Um, oh, are you talking about the transition or are you talking about the <laughs> Sinanju? Um, but yeah, so this thing uh, is is kind of uh, getting close to a point where I think I'm ready to to paint it for real. Uh, it's um, it's getting close to to kind of kind of we have, I have to finalize like a paint job at some point very soon. Um, so we'll uh, we'll get to that, and then you know obviously uh, after we we finish up the first hour here, we'll, we'll in the second hour we'll start the conversion for. Um, this guy right here. So, you know, uh, if you guys didn't see this yesterday, I did uh, snap fit a uh, RG new Gundam together. Um, everything's all ready for this, ready to go. Uh, things should be hopefully easy to, to take off. Um, I kind of made sure of that, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get to this on, in the second hour. But for now, let's um, let's focus in on the Sinanju. Um, there are some things that uh, I've changed slightly, uh, added a little bit. Uh, so we'll we'll get to that. So we'll take apart these, uh, the back section for a second here, and we'll also take off the the head. And you guys should see that I added a. If we zoom in, a uh, yeah, can actually focus. There we go. Uh, I added this kind of scoop with the heat sink. So Tim actually took my idea. So don't let him don't don't tell him I said that, but he did take my idea a little bit. Um, on the backpack right here. Um, so that just adds a little bit of detail, also added just a little bit of a detail here. Um, uh, Sam L says the transition, but the Sinanju is nice. Thing. Thank you, man. Like, so <laughs> that transition actually took me a pretty uh, big chunk of time. Uh, drop something here. Um, I had to kind of re-familiarize myself with working with animation vectors uh, in After Effects, but I think it came off okay. Um, we'll, 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 Everything is kind of like a work in progress, so uh, we'll we'll kind of things will start hopefully start to look better and, and things will be easier. Like the audio, hopefully will will uh, will will improve in time. Um, Voice Mia is very confusing, by the way, Z. Just letting you know, um, it's super confusing. So we'll we'll fix that as as the uh, as the time comes. Um, and so yeah, so the hood sc hood scoop right there is all. I mean, it's not finalized or anything like that. It's kind of just lightly set on there just because I still need to take this thing apart. Um, and if we focus back in again, here we go. Uh, you'll see um, with the, the Prime, I can, I can really kind of hone in on what, what it is I need to uh, either rescribe or, or fix up. Any kind of issues or any kind of like uh, glue lines that I may have not cleaned up properly, um, seam lines that I haven't gotten rid of, or anything like that, um, even like nub marks, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter how long you do this, you know, you always, you know, I, for me anyway, I tend to miss nub marks every now and then. Uh, so we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll go through that and we'll, 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 we'll fix these things um, to get ready for, for another prime and then 
we'll see if, if we fix everything at that point. So we'll <clears throat> we'll get started in that. So we'll it's we'll go ahead and kind of uh, take this thing apart and we'll we'll get that started. So uh, you know um, after I prime this thing and I put it together, I did notice a lot of issues with um, kind of sanding and scratches and all of that fun stuff. So remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, so Kyle says Rome wasn't. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, so you'll get there. Uh, thank you, Kyle. Um, I will try. Uh, hopefully, you know, I mean, I don't have anybody kicking me out, you know, while I'm talking. So there's that, right? So there's already a, a big improvement there, so to speak. Uh, so we'll, let's, uh, let's, actually, you know what? Let's, let's stay zoomed in so I can show you guys kind of like the big mess up. So one of the first things I, I noticed or, or fi started to fix was uh, the head. Um, so I actually, what I did was I squared the lines around this kind of raised part right here, around the dome of the head. And you'll notice I could, I've already started sanding right here, but that was just because I had messed up a scribe at this beginning area and it had kind of, um, like my, my hand, I guess, kind of went off track and, and there was a massive gash right there that I couldn't see. So, uh, and, uh, Hasaki Heart Hendren says, Yo, Pabs, hey, Hendren, what's up, man? Um, I did see your message earlier. Um, it's not because I don't want to play with you. It's just I haven't had time to play anything. Um, I will add you on PS4, I promise you, man. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll get that figured out. We'll, 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 we'll do something. All right, so, yeah, so um, you'll see here, like, I started to, let's take the beef in off. I started to kind of uh, sand this off and, and rescribe edges that I think will need to be deeper than usual. So you'll, you'll notice, it, it, and this totally depends on your style. If you are um, very heavy handed with, with the airbrush, um, we'll, uh, I would really recommend that you go deeper than, than um, kind of what you think you should go, just because um, it's very easy to go light on the scribing and then painting it and then noticing that the, the scribe isn't as, as deep as it should be and you won't get like a decent panel line out of it. Uh, so um, I would highly recommend that, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I personally don't count how many uh, kind of uh, passes I go. Um, I kind of just kind of go by what I think should be a decent amount, and usually I go deeper than that. So I go, you know, I, I, just so that I make sure that there is a line there when once everything is painted and I start to apply a panel wash. So um, it's, yeah, definitely, I think, anyway, a good idea. Uh, so... Um, I started to rescribe most of the top half of uh, this nodule here, so you can see all that. You can see like the kind of the smaller etched lines right there, and the lines on the front of the face, or oh, well, the front of the head, I guess. Um, and then also, I tried to. I've been working on the uh, the side of the cheeks right here. So um, so this is a uh, point five. These this is a, a point one five, and um, I normally when I try to do these kind of wider lines I try to go deeper for these two um, just so that there is a big difference between the two so when I'm applying this deeper of a line it's not I'm not accidentally kind of going past it so uh, it's um, you kind of get a feel for it uh, the more you do it so it's like the first time I, I, I was really messing up I mean this this side actually looks a little bit better so let's use that as an example um, so you can see there that, that you know that looks slightly deeper than the rest than the the thinner lines and that's that's on purpose uh you can see kind of uh, some more detail on here that i added so these are the so uh, if you guys watch uh tim chavo next streams um you, you guys will know that these are uh, i believe called hanging or floating uh notches um they don't really kind of go anywhere particularly you know they don't really they aren't really hanging on to anything and they're mostly in some some open space so this is kind of an, an example of that so three, uh, three angled lines kind of parallel to one another um, in a kind of like a, a dead space, essentially. Um, also some, uh, some pan lining right there. And it should be the same on the, the other side. So that's the head, um, you know, trying to fix that up. And uh, there isn't much for me here to fix. Uh, some of the biggest issues I, I did have was obviously with the biggest, I guess the biggest modification in this thing apart from this, the CS frame is the, uh, the sleeve here. So um, I've already started to work on this side right here, um, you know, uh, trying to make sure that the, the polystyrene strip right here and the epoxy putty um, don't have a seam line going in between them. So I've been sanding that down. 
um, making sure that the, the the small piece of polystyrene strip that's going in between these two, I forget what they're called again, I'm really sorry, um, is uh, is nice and flat and there's, uh, you know, they merge together pretty well. Um, and then I wanted to make sure that there is a separation between this this kind of top area of the the arm and the uh, this polystyrene strip right here. So that's kind of just been you know, it's just been a work in progress, and then you'll see, um, like here, I haven't, I haven't touched this side right here. You'll see some big issues. Um, if I can, can I zoom in a little bit more? No, I can't. So let's let's just get a little bit closer. I don't have super zoom, and I'm not that fancy. So we'll we'll we'll, um, we'll uh, focus in on this right here, and you can see just here, just under my uh, like over my finger, there's like a, a small bump, and that's just a a, a part of a piece of epoxy putty that I I didn't see. Uh, going over the polystyrene strip, and that's causing um, that kind of uh, weird weirdness is the best way to put it. Uh, so, you know, you'll see like a few bumps and scrapes right there that that needs to be um, kind of fixed. And uh, well, you know, we'll get to that today. I mean, it, you know, all of this is very minor. It's nothing, nothing too serious. Nothing is like, oh, you know, crap! I need to, to fix this right now. It's uh, it's they're nothing. Um, it's all cosmetic and you know nothing a little bit of, of elbow grease with some sanding sponges and stuff like that won't fix uh, so I mean that's that's pretty much it um, we can I mean for this anyway we can start with uh, let's see here. we don't want to go too rough so usually what I like to do is I start with a, a 400 sanding sponge and I just kind of lightly pass over it and then you can see and you know like it's I'm not applying too much pressure um, you want to try to go as light as possible because obviously you want to sand. Um, you don't want to remove too much material, but you want to move. You want to remove enough of that the bump area material to you know for it to be gone. So just lightly pass over it. And you know, I mean, this is very tedious and very mundane work, and it's not very interesting. Um, but it is part of the process. So you know, um, stuff like this I think is is important to um, to kind of get get right. I mean, there's a, I can't remember what the saying is, but like, if you don't, you know, I love it that pe when people try to, to kind of uh, improve their their builds and improve what it is they do, uh, I, I'm always going to admire and, um, you know, be happy when people do that, but never forget the basics. Um, it's, that's super important, you know, the, the basics will always get you where you need to go, the extra stuff, the modifications. Uh, will you know will come in time. So you know, always make sure you get the basics down first, and then the the other stuff will will come naturally. So you know, and then if we just keep sanding here, and then you'll see you can see the polystyrene strip right there, um, kind of coming through, and you can even see where that bump is because there is like a small divot right there. So we just we need to get rid of that, and it's just yeah, it's just more. More sanding, and then once I feel like that's in a good position, like I guess right now, then I'll start hitting it with a, uh, a 600, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll keep sanding. And then it's, that's pretty much it, man. Like, you know, everybody knows how to do this, right? Like, just you know, we'll go, we'll go higher grits. We'll oops, maybe not that high. And then uh, it's, it's very hard to see, but 800 right there. Sand this up, and then once we clean this off, that should be. A, if I can move a little bit to the center of this screen, that'd be that should really be swell. Uh, that should be uh, that should be pretty good to go. Um, you know, nothing nothing complicated, nothing um, nothing uh, complex right now. Uh, but well, you know, I think it's um, again important to to know this this kind of thing. Um, another thing that you should probably you should probably work on. So um, here's kind of the the backpack pieces, um, and this I I don't think there is much to fix. Uh, let me make sure that that is in focus. So you can see more of what I've done to to this top half because it was it's always been difficult to see apart from like these pieces right here, like the the detail parts, but the scribe lines and the detail, the primer really helps bring that out and helps you really see what it is you need to fix. Um, 
so there you go. That's uh, nice and simple. Very. Um, this has always kind of just been a a refresher on modifications because when you work on resin for so long, there's not there's not a lot of room for modification. Um, more, you know, it's more surface prep and 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 um, kind of making sure that the details from the resin kit pop. So, you know, stuff like this. Always, always a fun time. Always a, uh, always a good way to kind of remind yourself that hey, you can do more than just the one same old, same old thing. <laughs> so, here you go. That's uh, that's a backpack. Same, same deal on wherever the other one is right here. So, same deal on this other one. Uh, everything's nice and, and symmetrical. Uh, no discrepancies. No discrepancies there. Try to zoom, uh, kind of focus in again. This is kind, of, this is kind of the sucky thing for this. It doesn't autofocus for me. So there you go. Nice and nice and symmetrical. Uh, no issues or no discrepancies. Nice and clean. So this, I mean, um, you know, once I sand off this first first layer of primer and reprime it, this should be ready to paint. <laughs> video. The same old, same old. We're not going to talk about where that came from, but. Um, the big, another big kind of issue for me here was the feet, so uh, if we take this feet off. So, um, if you guys hadn't seen, I extended the feet by a good, like, I don't know, four or five millimeters. Breaking, <laughs> breaking, uh, Kyle H says, breaking away from the same old, same old, right? Same, right? Yeah, so, <clears throat> we gotta do that, right? We gotta, we gotta make sure we keep it fresh. <laughs> but yeah, so the feet here I extended, um, and you can, you can kind of see... I only added like a layer of primer, so you can kind of see where. If you make sure that focuses on me and not the table. There you go. Um, kind of, you can kind of see where I extended it from here to here. But the uh, the surface here is pretty rough, and you can see like a a divot for some reason right there, and a sandy divot. Excuse me. <coughs> oh my God. Um, so go ahead and sand that with some 400 uh, grit, and then kind of go up in. Uh, and grits again and make sure this is nice and smooth so yeah I use um, one of these high Q uh, acrylic sanding oh, this way acrylic sanding plates uh, nice and simple um, and I oh, I tend to sand in one direction so um, kind of a away from me essentially so it's like a nice and uh, nice and it helps me keep the the surface even so if I'm I move this way. Yeah, if I'm uh, if I'm sanding and I, I kind of do this, which is what a lot of people do, and that's fine. If it works for you, it works for you. But it's harder for me to keep the the um, the surface even if I do that. Excuse me for one second. Man, throat is killing me today. Um, so one direction, nice and smooth, nice and forward. Moving forward and then until all of that, um, all of that, uh, oops, that's where you go. most of that primer is gone. And I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter as long as you are doing it in one direction, keeping that surface nice and even. Then you know, it can go either way. You can go, you can go this way if you want to, but I, I tend to just do it for me to away from me. So. You can see there, I'm just making sure that this is nice and... Yeah, so uh, Hendren Sakiyad says, sanding in one direction uh, keeps the surface even. And that's that's important. Like, these small things kind of add up to keep everything nice and even, nice and smooth. It's it's uh, it's all a process, and, you know, it's, it's not the most exciting content, but it has to be done, right? Samuel says, I need to get some acrylic sanding sticks like that. I've uh, been using popsicle sticks. And popsicle sticks are, uh, popsicle sticks are fine. Um, these just have, obviously, a, a wider uh, surface volume. So it's easier to sand more if if you're... Uh, God damn it, I don't know where I'm going. There you go. Uh, if the surface is, uh, you know, if the surface is wider. So 
Angels Effect, you can actually see this shine from the 800. And that's, that's nice and smooth. That's going to be nice and even now. And then uh, we just have to repeat that on all sides and get up from the top. And then, uh, yeah, it's, this one will be good to go. And good for a, a second round of primer, making sure everything is uh, nice and smooth. And this is kind of my process for pretty much everything I do. Um, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> there, are, there are other options. So, I mean, something like the, these high cues are, are great, um, but they are not exactly the easiest to come by these days. Um, I can't even remember what they're called. Um, you can also get, um, let's see here, let me grab this real quick. You can get these Madworks sanding sticks. Um, these were, uh, these are, are also great. Um, they're on the thinner side, so if you can see, like this high key one is a, a little bit thicker. Um, so it's it's just easier for me to hold. But these are these are also fine, like you know, nice and nice and nice and flat, nice and sturdy. Um, so there's you know there's this option as well, and these are again a lot more available and easy to come by, and they come with like the the refills. Uh, so if I can just grab it, it's behind the camera. So uh, these uh, sanding paper. Um, strips and you, you've seen like people like Tex, uh, Tex Marquis uh, use these. So it's you know um, there's like a whole bunch of them in there. Uh, there's 20 usually, and this is the first pack I ever bought, and I'm still using the same pack. Um, Sean Syed Z says, uh, "Pro tip: If you don't build, do you don't see sanding material." I don't. I'm not sure. Where the infinity sticks <laughs> uh, for sanding sponges I mean yes absolutely uh, again you know Adam did uh, have these in stock recently um, these are great uh, you know they're they're very flexible so it's not so I mean obviously the difference is these are nice and and, and not pliable they're very solid um, so flat surface is great curved surface is great um, the other way not so great so <clears throat> uh, they have their uses for sure <laughs> so yeah, if if you guys want to if you guys want to pick up one of these, uh, you know, hit up uh, USA Gun Store with Adam, um, and then use uh, Z's code Ronin10, get, save yourself ten percent. There you go. There you go, Z. Thank you. know, that's that's my my plug for you for the day. <laughs> but yeah, so um, it's just, yeah, that's essentially that's essentially it, man. Like, and this is for every single build. I always do this for every build because. You know, once you start to forget the basics and you start doing more, it's it's kind of like a a plateau. You know, and again, not the most uh, not the most uh, not the most exciting thing I've ever done on stream, but we'll get to that stuff later, right? Oh, that's right. Julio also has a uh, <laughs> sponsorship. Um, you can use either way, either or. How's that? Hmm? So, just making sure this is nice and nice and even, nice and smooth. I'm gonna use the word smooth a lot as I sand because it's. I mean, who doesn't like smooth, right? So I'm not sure if this actually went out to Facebook because it should have. I mean, it should have gone on Facebook, but it, if it didn't, um, I believe it's a Streamlabs issue. Um, it's asking me. So when I when I went live, um, <clears throat> so YouTube went fine, and then for some reason Facebook was asking what game I was playing, and I'm not playing the game. So I'm not sure if that's like a, an advertising thing or something like that, but it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't broadcasting on Facebook. Yeah, so if it's not broadcasting and you guys were expecting it to be on Facebook, I do apologize. Um, we'll we'll figure that out as <clears throat> again as we go. So this is you know it still has some growing pains, but we'll we'll sort that. Out. Hopefully, I can get rid of this pretty soon, and I can you know it sound it, it'll hopefully sound better and look a little bit better. So we'll uh, we'll you know we'll that'll come with time. So we'll figure all of that. So hopefully you guys are having a good Saturday. Um, it's been kind of a, it, it, obviously it's been a very quiet one uh, over here for me. Um, there was a, there was an ambulance outside my house. 
today um, for the neighbors. Um, hopefully everything is okay. Um, I, you know, they were here for a good amount of time. Um, there is an elderly couple that lives across the street from me, and they were here for them. And I, you know, I hope everything's okay. And you know, times are very scary right now, but we're not going to get into that. So we're going to stay positive. We're going to stay, you know, we're going to stay 100% uh, positive today. Yeah. yeah. So here's the foot. I mean, you know, looks looks not so great, but once that <clears throat> once that second uh, round of primer hits, we should be in a good spot. A uh, good spot for this. Um, it's you know, it's very simple. All of this stuff is simple. And then I don't know if I've if I've shown you guys this, but um, the seam lines on this thing also uh, completely gone on the legs. Um, again, very simple and not a very difficult process, but it helps add that extra bit of, of you know, extra bit of quality to your build. So as long as you, you know, as long as you're, you're putting, putting the work in, you know, adding the basics on top of the, the modifications and stuff, then um, you can make your builds great. So there you go, nice and simple. Um, you kind of make sure you get underneath that. I just used a, uh, a folded up piece of sandpaper. Um, actually, it was this this guy right here, and that was one of the Madworks ones. And you just kind of go underneath there and just sand away. And then we'll do the same thing <coughs> to the uh, to the lances, which we'll, we'll do right now. So, um, if you guys don't know how to close up seam lines and and all that fun stuff, so um, that's that's that. And then we'll we'll get to this. And oh, obviously, I also started fixing the uh, the the antenna here. You can see the sanding right there. Um, so what I had done uh, on the antenna was I extend like. I made the bottom piece thicker with some 0.3 millimeter um, polystyrene sheet and added like a, a small piece of detail in the middle. So when I primed it, this was uh, slightly kind of, it was messy around the sides and there was a, a very clear kind of seam line between the, the polystyrene sheet and the, the actual piece. So just kind of sanded that down, made sure this was nice and smooth because this all looked kind of a bit janky. And uh, yeah, you can see some of the... Uh, square lines there right there as well right there so <clears throat> again not you know not nothing interesting here so let's move on and then we'll get to let's put this away for a quick sec and we'll uh <clears throat> bring in the, the neo Zeon because that thing needs a bit of love uh, it's been i was trying to show it yesterday and then i got kicked out so you guys not to blame for that so let's zoom out here for a second, and you can see it's not—it's <clears throat> not, it's not uh, primed or anything like that. Just because I still need to do some work on this guy. Um, yeah, this is really difficult to kind of move about and without zooming all the way out. You can guys can see there the uh, the Saltzen lances. Uh, again, the extension on the. Uh, the shoulder bits here, and obviously the extensions on the, uh, the twin tanks, uh, details on the arms, details on the front, as well as uh, almost I almost panel lined something on a, a surface. Like I think pretty much, I think the only one I didn't do it on is <clears throat> no, I did I did I did one forward. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna close up some seam lines on these these lances right here, and then we'll. Uh, <clears throat> this thing will be ready to prime, I think. Um, so we can get to that right now. So let's just remove these. And what I I also have to do actually is I need to I'm going to change up the stand, uh, just because whenever these launches are on, uh, these um, this doesn't have the uh, weight capability to keep it standing, so it'll kind of lean back. And um, yeah, yeah, I don't want that. So. Uh, <clears throat> so, Saki uh, Handrin says, "I wish you went a little longer on the tanks." Um, I think it's, I mean, I think it's a decent, I think that's a decent chunk because I, I think I believe I went. Uh, let me see. Real quick, I mean, the calipers are over there. Uh, I went like a, a good amount. Like I went a uh, full centimeter, so that's ten millimeters. No, is it? Yeah, ten millimeters to um. 
to the tanks. I think that's a I think that's a good size, and it, it's still it's a good proportion. I think for like the the stocky Neo Zeon. So I think that's I don't know. I'm not sure. So <clears throat> I think I think that's I think it's pretty good, but you know it's all subjective. Um, and I you know I respect the uh, I respect the the opinion. And I respect it. So, so what I'll do here is we'll just close these guys up, um, and then when, whenever it comes time to paint this guy. So, <clears throat> I don't use a guitar pick to open up my pieces, um, so what I do is I, since I don't have a guitar pick, <clears throat> and so Kyle, uh, says, uh, it's not about the length of the tank, but how you, how you use the fuel inside it. Um, I don't disagree, I guess. So I'll use, a, I'll use my ultra blade to kind of just wiggle it open a little bit. And then you can get this at any kind of uh, beauty salon store or whatever, but it's one of these things. Um, I don't I have no idea what the name is, but I, it's great to kind of just get in, uh, get in the piece once you have enough room, and kind of just pry it open. And there you go. <laughs> so, quick tip for me. I mean, if you don't have like a, a guitar pick or uh, one of the wave part separators, uh, this has been great for me. Uh, yeah, so so what I'll do is I won't actually um I won't what I do is I don't um, what's the word for it uh, I don't separate the part the whole way I leave it kind of open like this and then what I use is uh, Mr. Cement SP um, if you have Mr. Cement SP Beta the better uh, but this is usually just fine for what I need it for so I just in between the piece and I go right in between that gap. And then we'll close the piece, apply a little bit of pressure. to do is I apply like a thin thin piece like a little bit coated it on top and since this is like a, a large kind of it's not exactly a detailed piece like this I can be a little bit more careless with the amount I use and I just apply a little bit more pressure And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, Bill, Rush, aka Rushlam, what's up, man? How's it going? Hope you're having a fantastic Saturday. And what we'll do is we'll just leave this to one side and let that kind of. Uh, I was gonna say marinate, but I don't think that's the right word for it. So let's this up again. We'll use my uh, extra special pot separating. Put this to one side. Grab that knife. Now I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm trying not to jinx myself, but it's been about two weeks since I've hurt myself building this thing, so um, we'll, uh, <clears throat> hopefully that's the, that keeps up. Uh, so let's catch up here. So uh, Rushlam, aka Bill, says, Handrin, I thought you were jumping on in the stream. 
Um, I haven't figured out the whole guest thing yet. So um, the problem is if I do a guest stream, usually it'll have to go through StreamYard, uh, which I'm currently not using here. Um, so mechanisms and, and Brian's, um, Brian's and I'm guessing. So eventually uh, Z's stream will be using that, but I haven't gotten to using that yet. But once I, I figure all of this stuff out, um, we will get to that. We'll get to having more than just me building on stream. We'll have people come in. We'll have a conversation, so. Uh, Kyle, aka Clueless Gunplot Builder says, if you're not using your teeth to separate parts, are you even building? Yes, uh, because uh, teeth are, <laughs> I mean, you can use your teeth, but there's more than one way to, to separate pieces, am I right? So, uh, yes, you're still building. Uh, another question is, are you building it right? I'm not sure. That's another question. So nice and nice and simple again. I mean, I'm not doing anything particularly special here. We're just hosing up some seam lines and I know what people showed up for, um, to see, so we'll get to that real soon. That is a promise. DMCs. So Hasaki uh, Handrin Art, ha Hasaki Art, aka Handrin says, DMCs. The thing is, my DMC might get people mad, or oh, my opinions is not well received by the masses. Um, I mean, as long as it's not, it's not to instigate uh, kind of you know hostility. You, you're you're entitled to your opinion. Um, there's no problem there. I don't. I don't. You know, I'd be happy to. Happy to, to talk to you about stuff. So, anytime, I'm always available. You know, through DMs. So just slide through. I think it's what the young people, the young folk say. <laughs> so in the DMs. So yeah. So okay. So we are 50 minutes. You know what? That's so the SD stuff is kind of um, always. It's always a constant in progress. But I think we're getting close to getting all of this stuff ready. But I think. Right now, I'm kind of in the waiting stage with uh, with closing up these seams because once once I close this guy up, um, I'm gonna have to obviously uh, place this in here and then close this guy up, close this seam line, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll probably have to paint this first and then mask it and then close this seam up and paint this guy. Uh, so I mean, it's not a big deal, um, but. I kind of, it kind of, I have to make sure that this this thing is is dry before I uh, before I start closing this thing up and painting it. So we're in a holding pattern there. So what we'll do is I'll put this all to one side for now. Um, so all the way over here, and then uh, we'll get started on on that next project. No, well I do have several projects go ongoing. Um, not a lot of people know this, but um, you know I'm also working on the. Uh, an MG Barbatos, two MG Barbatos, so that's kind of in the works right now. Once that's ready to start painting, which is, it's just a simple paint paint job. Um, I can also try to, to film that. We'll, we'll head to this play booth and hopefully audio issues will be a little bit better by then, but you know, for now we'll, we'll, we'll kind of, you know. Uh, so, uh, RG New, let's, uh, let's get started on this guy. Um, so if you guys have never worked on the RG New before, just a quick review of this thing. Um, it's great. Uh, the uh, the build was uh, a lot of fun, um, and that's that's I'm not putting I'm not saying that in any kind of light way because I've I've li I like to think I've built quite a few things, um, but I haven't built a lot of of RGs. Like the only other RG I built was or we built I guess was the uh, RG Sazabi. Uh, conversion kit by um, Simpro Models, 
and that was a fun, like, that was a ton of fun. And I was like, yeah, I mean, this is great. If, if RGs were all like this, I, I'd, I'd get more. Um, and that was kind of the bar, and this thing has raised the, the, like, the bar in terms of build, uh, build fun. Like, it was just a fun time to build. Um, it did take me one full night to, to put the whole bo the main body together. So um, yeah, this is uh, this, so this is the regular RG new. It's it's already got a ton of fantastic detail. Um, so let's, let's just zoom in and focus in on this thing. Like, yeah, very nice. Very I mean very. It's great proportions. I mean I'm not a fan of the squished head, but we'll fix that in a little bit. Um, but great proportions, great details, uh, but we can add to it, right? Let's add to, let's add to the detail on this guy. So let's, uh, let's zoom out here and put this guy over here. And then we'll just what we've got this ready beforehand. But, all right, so this is, it says Madwise, but that's just the distributor. So this is the Trouble Toys RG new conversion. So this you guys can pick up right now if you guys want to build this along with me uh, um, at Galactic Toys. Uh, I believe it is around about $39, $40. Um, so, wait, what? Who's Brandon? Uh, oh, well, okay, let me, let me catch up with the chat real quick because you guys are, it seems like there's a, a, quite a few people talking. Uh, so... Rushlam, aka Bill, says, Pabs is all about those fancy doodads, like paint brushes and sandpaper. Real builders paint with fingers and remove plastic by rubbing it on concrete. I mean, you know, I don't know, I don't know how many grits concrete has, but um, I'm pretty sure it just has one. <laughs> um, Kyle says, uh, LOL, Sam, LOL. Uh, Z says, preach man, uh, Brandon. Uh, so I'm pretty sure Rushlam is, is Bill. Uh, but yeah, I think I think we all we all get it. So anyway, so um, yeah, Trouble Toys uh, RG conversion. So this is probably one of the simplest conversions you guys can get. Like it is a very, it's not. So there there are kind of two types of resin conversions, right? You've got the first one. You've got um, the ones that kind of change one frame uh, model kit into a completely different model. So like for example, the um, the Topless um, Rosen Zulu, um, which is a conversion of the Sinanju. So it uses the Sinanju frame to create a, a whole new, essentially, kit. Right? Um, this is a what's known as a detailed kit. So it it keeps the so this is the second kind of type. Um, it is the same um, kit. So this this is still an RG new, uh, but it just adds detail to it. So. Let me, uh, let me open this up, and then, I mean, this is as bare bones as it gets. I mean, there's not a lot of pieces. Um, there's, you know, it's all kind of just in a small bag. And then you've got, uh, what is this? Water side decals, which is nice. Um, so a lot of, a lot of uh, companies, a lot of uh, garage kit companies will usually include water slide decals. There are a few that don't, and... To them, I say boo, yeah, but uh, yeah, um, usually they come with water slide decals. Some of them come with photo edge parts, um, and uh, some of them even come with um, obviously the LEDs and the wirings and all that stuff for their for their kit. So it's all uh, usually it's all included. Um, and again, I said, like I said, there's there's a few that don't, but usually they are. It's all inclusive, so everything you'll need for the kit is there. Uh, and what I usually do is I like to keep the the water slide detail in the box whenever I, uh, until I'm ready to use them, and then uh, that'll I'll know exactly where it is. So here are the pieces. Uh, so Asaki Art aka Hanjin says, Chris, when it comes to conversion, I'm kind of li like Tim. I rather make my own version of a modded build rather than using somebody else's design, and that is 100% valid. Um, there is nothing wrong with creating uh, your own design, your own thing. Uh, but I don't think there's anything wrong with the conversion kit either. Like for example, um, I'm trying to remember who it was that built built it. But there is a sec there was, there was another person that built the uh, the Yuja Land um, Exia Amazing. Um, God, I want to say almost a month ago, just before all of this stuff went down, and it looks great. It looks looks fantastic. 
um, but it didn't it it doesn't it didn't look anything like mine. So even though it was the same design, it still it was still unique. Like it was still a unique thing that that person built away from mine. So um, while I agree that you know um, doing your own lines and doing your own design is is one hundred percent valid. That is that is totally fine. I think resin conversions are fine too. So. You know, I don't. You know, I think I think both sides of the coin are very valid. Um, there's nothing wrong with either. So, at least at least that's what I think. So. All right. So thanks to this. Um, so let's get all of these pieces out. And what's nice about um, this conversion kit is these pieces have already kind of been uh, cleaned up. Like you can see here. Uh, so for example, you see. Zoom in, zoom out business. You know, we'll have to find an easier way to do it. But if we zoom in, you'll see um, this has no. Uh, usually, it comes with at least a, a sprout nub. So that's that's kind of like um, the, spr the the nub where they've poured in the resin into the mold, and then when they took it out, they just left it there or made, they just cut it away from the piece. Uh, but you can see that there's no nub on this thing. So they've 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 gone in and they've cleaned it up clean this up a little bit, like the absolute minimal, um, and uh, they've, uh, yeah, they, like, this is one of the few companies I've seen do this, so it's all nice, I mean, it's all great, and what I usually do is, is I, I mean, I actually, this is fine, yeah, so what I do is I, I like to lay everything out, and um, it'll make, like, for the, ne it, it helps when I do this for the next step. So I like to, to, to glue everything together and lay everything out and make sure that none of this stuff is uh, broken or, you know, and some, you know, it's, it helps to stay organized to a degree, right? Um, so let's, let's kind of like, let's, let's go ahead and do that real quick. And you can see right here, actually, here's a broken piece. Here's the first piece. So we're going to have to go in and fix that and that kind of stuff, right? So gonna have to look for the other piece and, and work it to fixing. So that's an on piece right here. And what I usually like to do is even if I have a conversion kit of something, I like to snap like the base kit together, right? So for this one for this RG new I put it together first. Um, it's it's always nice to kind of see uh, how the base kit will look. Um, and it, it's you know it help, it helps you appreciate the details that you'll add to to this new uh, to this kit more once you apply the conversion. So this is a this is a red piece. So it's just you know. and again not 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 the most interesting thing to do, um, but it is it's a part of the process, right? And and it's it's always nice to make sure that the you 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 have a process. So this is an arm. I mean, the details on this thing are pretty, pretty I, I don't like to think pretty spectacular. So, uh, Charlie Mecca, a.k.a. Tim, shows up an hour later and says, uh, this does not look like the Sinanju or Neo Zeon, Christopher. Uh, first of all, my name is Christian. And secondly, you're late. I was working on it a little bit earlier. Uh, you missed it. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, but you can see like the, the, the details on this thing. Uh, very nice, um, you know, nice and nice and clean, uh, and um, yeah, not bad, not bad at all. So let's uh, zoom out a little bit, and yeah, so it's just it's just organization at first. You know, usually organization goes out the window after a while. Um, sweet tea in moderation. Is what Tim says. Uh, yeah, he was actually he was actually watching himself, which is you know more power to you, buddy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know I like to I like to keep it clean, and then once I start to kind of work on pieces, then this cleanliness kind of disappears, and we're into the the whole mode of, of uh, cleaning things up and making things messy. So. And then from my understanding on this conversion. Uh, it doesn't really mess with the frame all that much. So again, very simple, very easy uh, 
conversion to kind of get your your feet wet in in the world of of, of resin kits, right? Because I mean, there's a lot there's a lot out there, and um, I always get the question of uh, what kit should I start with if I want to get into resin? What kit should I start with? And I always there's always like a few that I recommend. Um, so uh, you know, this one uh, I think is one of them. Uh, this thing is. I mean, you guys can see the parts count is not very high, but the detail is great. So, uh, you know, it's it's a good spot. It's 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 got that good kind of middle ground of a very small parts count but high detail, and uh, that that's kind of what you know that's a good a good place to kind of start with these resin kits. Simpro models again, like the weapon sets. Um, if you can find it, some of his um, his older conversion kits, uh, yeah, go for it. Um, I know that the uh, RG Sazabi conversion is another one I usually recommend. Uh, my mic volume, sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let me see. Is that better? Can you guys hear me better? Well, Tim, it's already at, it's at 4 dB. Is that better? It's kind of echoing in my ear. That's why it's hard for me to tell, like, kind of, uh, what's the word for it? Um, kind of tell where the volume is. So if that's better for you guys, let me know. If not, then we'll fix that too. It's definitely echoing in my ear. Let's see. So let's see if that's better. If not, then we'll, we'll adjust that some more. Um, so let's keep going. Just put everything together. I can even hear like the, the clickety clack of my table. There's a bit of an echo. Okay, but it's louder. All right. Um, gotcha. Let's... Can you guys still hear the echo? the problem all right uh, let's see yeah so Z recommended like this this thing called voice meter or voice meet or uh, from by banana and um, it's very confusing <laughs> like it's a, it's a digital mixer essentially sounds like you have a double input or something I might have uh, if I let me mute my mic for a second. Let me see if this. this Are you guys able to hear me now? Like, can you guys hear me? It was all Z, man. Like he, he was like, you need to fix your audio. I'm like, I, I know, but like right now I'm using this this headset, so it's like it's very, uh, it's very grainy and it picks up everything and just amplifies what it is. Um. Uh, Bill, do you have speakers on? If you do, that could explain it too. Um, I it shouldn't be on, so that's that's kind of the weird thing. Um, I wasn't echoing last night. I was using it yes last night too, but. Is the echo still there? Uh, let me know. It is still there? Damn, okay. Hmm. But if it sounds better, then let's... I guess we can continue. Let's continue. <laughs> ah, growing pains, you know? It's growing pains. It is what it is. We'll sort that out. So here's the here's the here's the second broken piece. So there's the there's the foot. There's the second foot. And I'm sure this was broken in transit or just you know maybe I was being careless or anything. But there it is. So it, it actually looks like it actually broke on a panel line. And that's a very thin piece. So be careful. I mean, a lot of these resin pieces usually are. Zoom in. Uh, there we go. 
So you can see how thin that piece is. And then if I grab the broken piece, right here you can see that it is, or it was a part of a panel line. So, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fill that in. We might have to thicken that a little bit. And then we'll uh, we'll rescribe that line. Oh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, we'll show that process as we go. So uh, that shouldn't be too difficult of a fix. But it's still a fix that we have to, to kind of get through and, and do. So, you know, again, all just, all just part of the process. So. All right. And we'll just that and that. You know, I like to put the pads together just because, again, it'll be easier to find things when it's time to... Oops. As he took a photo. There you go. And zoom out. And that's all the pieces. I mean, it's not, again, it's not, um, it's not one of those super difficult conversions. It's nice and simple. Um, parts count of, I don't know, one, two, three, four. I don't know, 40, 40 pieces or so. Um, and it just replaces pieces, right? So it's not even like you don't have to modify the frame. You don't have to uh, to fix. You don't have to saw anything off because there are parts where there are some things that require you to, I don't know, um, extend the waist or uh, remove um, some connection points uh, on the front skirts or the legs and stuff like that. Like the the biggest culprit I want to I want to say is the Studio Maniac ZZ that has you uh, actually sewing the leg in half and um, trying to refuse it, uh, despite the fact that the original ZZ legs has that that uh, the transformation gimmick on the legs that ha has it like flip over. So it's that was a very difficult process and that's still a work in progress so um, not the most innovative conversion kit there but this this should be pretty simple so we'll remove that um, we're only working currently on just the, the main body right now and uh, we'll yeah we'll get started so there we go um, so if you guys have any questions feel free I don't have the fancy we have a question but I will answer your questions uh, any any and all uh, that have any so Let's go ahead, and there goes the, ne the neatness kind of just gone. So we'll start with the shoulders. Uh, very easy and simple to replace. We'll put the new to one side, and we'll just remove all of this stuff, essentially, from it. Try not to, not to break anything in the process. So. Uh, One thing I can give this conversion kit, no, not conversion kit, this RG credit, um, as well as being fun, is how sturdy everything feels. Yes, Tim, we have a question. Where? Where is the question? You can't, you can't be doing that and then not answer, or ask a question. You know what I mean? Also, you were late. Can't believe it. All right. So this requires the removal of this guy. And usually, so we'll look, let's look at the, uh, uh, let's, yeah, there we go. and then we'll do a zoom in, and then we can compare like the details of this guy. Uh, <clears throat> Bill uh, Rushlan uh, has a question. Uh, how long till you will be finished with your SD build? So, the SD Sinanju is, um, after I do uh, those fixes, and then I do another prime, we'll be ready for paint. Okay, so... The Sinanju is ready to go. Technically, it's 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 uh, we're going through the fixes right now for those modifications, and I mean let's let's bring the body in again real quick so Tim can see what the, what the hell is going on with this thing. So it's been primed, it's ready to go. the The main torso is is pretty much ready, right? Um, it's got the uh, the modifications there. Um, we'll have to fix that seam at some point. Um, all that stuff 
good to go. So once I reprime and I fix some of these some of these issues with the sleeves and the feet, um, it's ready for paint. Uh, now the Neo Zeon, uh, once uh, the C lines and the lances are done, and I think the next the next step would be just to to kind of modify these hands a bit, just because they're hollow. So we'll have to fill these in, and I don't like this this two thumb thing going on. Um, so yeah, once we once we once we fix this up, uh, and we'll probably have to fix in uh, fix a few. Well, actually, there's not a lot of seam lines on this thing, so maybe not even the seam line. Um, that'll be good to go. And then I think the Neo Zeon is ready for prime. So I think within the next, for the Sinanju, the next week, for the Neo Zeon, the next couple of weeks, they'll be ready for paint and they'll be, they'll be ready to go and um, be ready to, to, to paint. So uh, all of that stuff is, we're almost, we're, that's almost ready. So you don't, you don't have to worry about that. Thank you for your inquiry, as Bill says. Um... Yeah, grab a cup of tea, man. Yeah, as long as it's PG tips. Um, as the sake art says, he's, he's going to go get some tea. Please do. For me, because I don't have any right now. But anyway, so. Let's zoom in. Uh, let's make sure that's nice and focused. And you can see like the, the difference between the two pieces here, right? Um, just, it's not it's nothing spectacular. Like, it's not, it doesn't, there's not a lot of differences here. Like, there's a raised piece here. And again, this is something you could do uh, yourself. You can modify it. The pieces yourself. Um, this is just a detail up conversion kit. Um. <laughs> uh, Kyle uh, Clues Gunpla says, "I'd like to think it would be more bloody hell." Another question. Uh, we will get to that when we get there. So right now we're not we're not quite at that <laughs> at that stage. I knew this accent was going to kill me, but anyway, uh, so there's uh, there's uh, differences right there, and then um, I guess another it's another good piece that shows some detail. Um, God, I don't, I don't even know. Uh, oh, I guess like the the thigh piece, so you can see there's the thigh. Um, well, I guess the the front thigh, and then here's the thigh piece and you can see it's, it's all just it's all just detail um you know obviously the the more complex the build the more detail there'll be and obviously the more work it'll be uh so that's 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 all this is so we'll just <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll put this this uh conversion uh this the shoulder together real quick and then yeah we'll uh uh, Sam L says, I think whenever someone has a question, until he has one made, Pabby is required to say one of those two. Ooh, all right. Let's, all right, we'll, we'll make a deal then. <laughs> I can't believe it. We'll make a deal. Uh, whenever somebody has a question, I'll say, I'll say, bloody hell, another question. Okay? We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll compromise with you guys, because uh, you guys are awesome. And, uh, you know, you guys are, are great. You know, you're spending your weekend with me. And, uh... You know, Tim's influence on you guys is pretty strong, but I understand. <laughs> so let's. What's that? Can probably maybe put this on. So what's nice about this kit is it is, with because of its simplicity, it's very easy to snap fit together and and look at it and make sure everything fits well and it currently does. I mean, I didn't do any modification. Oops. I am not even on the screen. I mean, I didn't do any modification to this piece. And it, it I mean, that's pretty flush, I'm going to say. <clears throat> uh, Sam L. Oh, everybody asked that question. Chava Mecca, aka Team, says he's, ca he's caved, ladies and gents. I didn't cave, I compromised. There's a difference. I'm going to say one of those two things because I don't have the special f fancy stream deck like some other person in Maryland. So, there you go. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, so, yeah, let's just put this together real quick. Um, and again, what's nice is it's it's so... It goes on like very easily. I mean... It isn't... I mean... E so, with... with Regular resin kits, like with, with with the more, 
I want to, I guess the more complex stuff. Um, it, usually you have to work to get this kind of fit in, right? I mean, um, I don't, I don't know if Tim can, I think Tim can test this with his B club resin on the, the Blue Destiny. It did not go that well. I uh, didn't go, it didn't snap together this well. Like you had to modify everyone. <coughs> Bill uh, here, Rushlam says, I would prefer if he just do his own thing. No need to copy anyone if he doesn't want to. I'm not copying anyone, but if you have a question, I'll answer it. And if I'll say bloody hell another question, but I won't say the I won't say that to the first question. I'll, I'll just say bloody hell another question, like to the to the uh, to the second question, moving forward. Uh, Juan Ferreira, what's up, man? Uh, oh, thank you, thank you for subscribing. That is uh, that's awesome. Uh, welcome. Um, hopefully, uh, you know you'll 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 learn something from this uh and uh yeah let's uh let's continue so here is essentially your shoulder i mean we're, we're, we've pretty much just snapped the shoulder together um super simple uh, maybe this wasn't the best one too. <laughs> i should have i should have built something that needed work but uh essentially here you go i mean more detail uh you know it's already clean uh what will what we will do, however, is we will be rescribing this. Cause so, so with pretty much all of my conversion kits, I rescribe every line. I sand every surface. Um, uh, Juan Ferreira says, uh, which kit is that? Pabs? Um, this is the Trouble Toys um, conversion kit for the RG New Gundam. So it's, uh, it's, it's this guy right here. It's the RG New. Um, I snap, I snap together this guy like Thursday night uh, to get to get everything ready for today uh, and then this is just the uh, Trouble Toys uh, RG New Conversion Kit um, which is di being distributed by Madworks and is sold uh, at uh, Galactic Toys so if you guys want to pick one of these up uh, I believe the price is around about $39.95 uh, great kit uh, and very uh, very kind of beginner friendly conversion kit so nice yeah, so let's just I, let's just keep going. I guess uh, usually again, usually you have to modify these things, or you have to really fix these up to get them to 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 fit and work. Um. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, Ruslan uh, Bill says, "Wait, XC notifications? Okay, I'm Adi. All right, we well, that's that was just like a most of my notifications are usually just placeholders, um, but." Uh, you know, I'm more than welcome to, to suggestions on how you guys want to see those notifications. Um, Kyle, uh, aka Clueless Gunplug Builder, says, This is giving us false expectations on resin kits. Yes, it is. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to... What's the right word for this? Um, I'm going to say this now. Like, this is what I'm trying to explain. So, this thing is very easy. So, it's a good, it's a good kind of beginner kit. It is not so most resin kits are not usually this easy to put together, right? So that's what I, that's kind of the what I was trying to say before before we kind of tumbled down this this uh, this hill of of th stuff I should say when somebody asks a question. Um, <clears throat> it's it this is very easy. It's already been kind of cleaned up for you. Like there's no nubs. Um, it's it's you know it's got a very low parts count. Um, and it is it is very simple to just replace one piece and play and put the new piece on another um, You know you have like once we get this done. We'll get it painted. We'll get it done We'll move on to another another kit and um, We'll probably just step it up again, uh, and I mean, you know, I am not Sure of any resin kits, so uh, you know, we'll go we'll um, I might even you know cast a vote and see which which kits you guys want Want me want to see me do? I know uh, Handrin, aka Hasaki Art, wants me to work on the wing bust, um, but you know there's also the one one hundred God Gundam by Model Bingo that I could work on, uh, an Infinite Dimensions kit, um, the the Yuja Land um, Hyakushiki uh, Assault type. We can you know we can work on that. So it's 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 this is essentially me just introducing you know a, a conversion kit that anybody could work on that isn't very demanding uh so that's you know that's what that's kind of what this is for so uh so there you go uh horn Ferrer says uh that was cool that axia came up because i'm i'm building the pg7 sword awesome dude um uh 
be careful with the joints because I know you know the the uh, the double O the PG double O has that special kind of you have to press the joint down to be able to move the joint around so just be careful with that. Uh, Matt uh, Matthew Payton, yo my boy Pabs, hey what's up dude? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's me. You know, streaming right now. Um, but yeah, uh, Hasaki uh, AK Hundred says wing bust, wing bust, wing bust. We can work on the wing bust, yes. Um, Kyle, aka Clues Gone by Blood, uh, says or asks uh, not bloody question. Uh, do you have the Studio Works uh, one one hundred one board? Um, I don't know or heard or have heard of the one one hundred Studio Works, um, but I have the Stickler Studios one one hundred uh, one board, which is I believe I think is what you're what you're saying. Uh, so I do have that, so um, we can. I mean, again, there's we have options, so we uh, you know. We can uh, we can get to we can get to building those. So I'm just again, it's, this is more of an intro introduction, and then once we uh, once we have this all done and painted up, then uh, then we'll move on and we'll, we'll build something uh, a little bit uh, a little more involved. And uh, you know, uh, hopefully, you guys will be joining me uh, on that journey. So usually, I embark on that journey dead alone. So um, you know, uh, with this whole streaming thing, we'll. We'll see how far we can get. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Sam Mel says, I second the wing bust. Uh, Bill uh, Ruslan says, Twin Towers. Oh, God. <laughs> Could you? I, I have no idea how I can even str like stream that work. Um, and then uh, Kyle, aka Clueless Gumpy Willis, says, That's the one got the name mixed up. Yep. Yeah, it's Stick uh, Stickler Studios, Craig Chan. Uh, that's his. Uh, that's his company slash uh, design uh Ka, let me see here uh juan ferreira says yo that dynamics kit that you previously built what company made that um that was a another stickler studios build so that was a collaboration built with galactic toys um they uh they carried um that um well, no they didn't uh there was a yeah that was a collaboration with galactic toys with finishers paints so finishers no we over in japan um they wanted me to test out their uh their paint line um for that, uh, for that conversion, um, so I, I chose the Dynamis along with that conversion kit and um, painted it that pe peppermint color, uh, and uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a Stickler Studios conversion kit. Uh, Kyle, aka Clues Gumpa, says we can do a build along. Uh, it's sitting in my backlog. Yeah, dude, that'd be cool. Well, let's let's do it. Um, that actually, uh, at, you know, I've inspected the pieces and that thing needs needs some love. So let's uh, let's do it. Uh, Matthew Payton says uh, Maniac Studio PG anything. So I have a <laughs> God, I have a couple of Maniac Studio PG kits. Um, so the first one being um, the Unicorn, uh, the other one being uh, the Banshee, and then one more which is the Exia uh, conversion. Uh, so um, you know we can that one is definitely going to need a lot of work. Maniac Studio is very uh, what's the word for it? Um, they're not very progressive with how they uh, have people install their their pieces, like their conversion. So um, that's definitely going to be a very involving build. So uh, Juan Ferrer says, "Yeah, it was like a Tiffany blue." Yeah, dude, that's kind of what I was going for. Um, so the, I mean, obviously the Dynamics is a sniper mobile suit, right? So it's it's supposed to be very sneaky, but I just wanted to give it like a I don't know, like a a, a very contrasting pastel almost paint paint job and uh they had uh so uh finishes has a uh a paint color called peppermint and it, it's a very light teal like a tiffany blue like you're saying um but i also wanted to kind of mix up the custom colors to see how well the the paints kind of uh mixed together and they, they mixed together very well the only the only issue i had with finishes nobi was that um it's not as as tough as uh, Gaia notes or Mr. Kahlo, uh, and that's the that's the only negative I can I can give I can give the um, finishes. So if you guys want to check out, um, I know that Galactic Toys still has some in stock. So if you guys want to try finishes, uh, you know it's usually used for um, uh, you know car models and um, and stuff like that. So the colors are very basic, um, nothing nothing too extravagant. Uh, but if you want to try them out, Galactic Toys has them. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. 
Hasaki Art, AK Hendrix says, I wish they had conversions for the older 160 kits. Um, I'm not sure they've ever actually made one. Um, I know there was one, at some, I believe there was one for a God, the God Gundam, the, the old 160 God Gundam. Um, but I was, I'm not, I don't remember the designer and I don't remember the company that made it, but I know there was one at some point. Uh, Will uh, says, is there a super detailed conversion kit for the mega size Zaku? Oh, the Zaku? Um, to my knowledge, no. I don't think anybody's actually made a, a conversion kit for that. Um, that's a lot of resin, for one, for the mega size stuff. Um, that is a lot of resin. So, I'm not sure how how expensive that would be not only for the designer but also for for like the person buying it so you know a lot of these these companies a lot of these these places that 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 create resin kits or conversion kits or anything like that you have to remember the costs involved in making these and recosting these it's a it's a very expensive process so anything involving that amount of plastic is going to be pretty expensive Uh, Bill uh, says they have, but they are all recasted at this point. Um, yeah, so usually I, I always recommend people buying, you know, to buy the original uh, conversion kits, you know, to support these guys. I mean, it's usually just a, it's usually just a one man operation. Um, but for anything that old, uh, if you can only get a recast, then you know, I mean, that's all that's all you can really do. Uh, so if you can pick it up, man, I mean. I say go for it. Alright, so, uh, second shoulder, again, super simple, nothing, nothing complicated. Uh, but yeah, this a, Paz, create a one four, uh, Bill says Paz, create a 148 resin kit. Um, what do we have of a, of a 148, in 148 scale right now? So we have the Mega Size uh, RX-78 Grandpa, we have the Zaku, uh, we have the Unicorn, right? Those Are those the only Mega Size? Uh, let me know. Because I've always been interested in making a uh, conversion kit. Um, I know Brian has, has his full city conversion, and that's freaking awesome. Um, but, uh, but um, I mean, the process is, is, I wouldn't say straightforward, but I understand the process. Uh, so, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, but I, you know, I mean, there's not a lot of options out there, right? So we have the grandpa, the Zaku, the and the unicorn. Oh, the the age, the uh, the age one, I believe. Right? Age one normal. That's another mega size. I don't know. Oh yeah, well, I wouldn't mind doing that at all. It'd be it'd be cool. Okay, so let's put this first one on here. Uh, so, uh, Ben Kiat, yeah, um, I, I hope I'm saying your name right, man, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, some parts of the RG New conversion are costed badly, I think. Um, so, I have it all laid out, uh, and I've kind of looked at, I've looked at the pieces quite briefly, or very briefly, and I haven't seen anything costed badly so far. Right, so um, the only issue uh, I've I've come across right now is the broken foot, so which we we'll, which we'll get to at some point. Um, but I haven't noticed anything too jarringly bad. Um, I mean, again, we'll zoom in here and see if we can just there we go. Um, I mean, the details are pretty crisp, right? Like it's not. I'm, I'm not seeing anything that that stands out to me as this is a bad cost because I mean when I first started um, one of the first conversion kits I bought when I didn't really know what I was doing was a uh, actually it was an, uh, a new gun of a car conversion recast um, I wasn't sure on what the design was um, but I had bought it on eBay and it was it was just it was not good um, it, the pieces were very warped uh, there was still putty on the inside, so you know, 
that was that was not a good look. But if you look at the inside of this thing, it's pretty clean. Uh, there you go. No putty in sight. Um, everything is neat. Uh, so I don't know, man. I mean, it could be since Trouble Toys is a, a particularly new company. Maybe their it was in, you know you got a bad batch or you got one of the ones that had a, a bad run of the mold. But um, yeah, uh, I mean, I think mine's okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, Hendrix says, okay, we have another bloody question. Does the Pabs, ha the Pabs, wow, okay, wow, uh, have plans to make his own conversion in the future? Uh, yes, actually, I, I've, <sighs> um, nothing is concrete yet, right? So, um, nothing, I'm, you know, I'm still kind of playing around with it a little bit, but I have, I, you know, I've kind of asked around it in, in terms of what kind of the process is. Uh, you know, I, un I understand the production of it, I understand the distribution of it, um, and the costs involved, um, and it is, it is a very a costly process, and it's, that's why resin kits are so expensive. Um, so yes, to answer your question, to be more, like, to, you know, to be more straightforward, yes, I have plans to make a conversion kit of my own in the future, so... Uh, Juan Ferrer asks, uh, Yo Pebs, you got a coupon code for Galactic Toys? Um, I personally do not, um, so uh, I don't do, these days anyway, I don't do uh, promotion codes, but um, you can get, uh, I believe, 10% off uh, using the code. And Z, if you're here, please like try, um, see if you can find it, but there is a code for uh, the Chicago Gumpla Builders Group, uh, and I believe it's Gumpla Chicago 10. I want to say, um, and you can you can save yourself ten percent. So uh, if that doesn't work, come back to me. I'll see if we, we'll, we can figure it out. So it's been a while since I used a code for that, but th for thirty nine ninety five, it's not a bad price. But yeah. So there you go. Uh, I have done little little work in the second in the second hour. Can you believe that? Z, thank you. Um, could you, um, Z's back. Uh, can you find the coupon code or the the ten percent off code for Galactic Toys uh, on the GBC? Because I know we had one or we still have one. And Zach, uh, Zach, um, Zach Blake, uh, who works for Galactic Toys. Um, uh, yeah, Gunpla Chicago ten. Thank you, Z. So, uh, yeah, you can save yourself ten percent uh, right there, uh, and that'll you know. In, in these times, that's, that should that should be helpful. So, and we're still on the shoulders, by the way. Good God. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's continue. <clears throat> yeah, it's not the right one. Uh, Handron has another bloody question. Uh, what is the deal with ten percent only discounts? How come there aren't twenty or thirty? Uh, so that's kind of a it's. A, that's a loaded question. Like it's it's and it's it's what's the word for it? Uh, I think it differs from from company to company, right? Uh, you know, sometimes it's the margin is is too small uh, to give more than ten percent, and you know, I mean, obviously they want to keep the better uh, promotions for whenever they have ones for themselves. So if everyone's using ten or you know using more than ten percent. Like not only is their bottom line disappearing, but uh, you know they're uh, they're already not making much. I mean, oops. So I'd say that would be that would be the reason. And again, it differs from company to company, right?
Yeah, just a second shot. Like, nice and simple, man. Like, I've never, I don't think I've ever built, I don't think I've ever built a conversion kit that went on this quickly. Yeah, like, even with the, uh, the RG Sazavi, uh, conversion kit, which I should have, I should have brought out here. You know, let's, shall we bring it out here? Let's bring it out, let's bring it out here, okay? Let's, let's, let's do that real quick. Because we have time. We got some time. Okay, so for those that have not seen it, here is the uh, here is the RG Sazabi um, from uh, with the conversion kit by Simpro Models, uh, which I believe is available at USA Gun Store, right? So uh, you know this this thing. Um, so with one of the the great things about Simpro, um, you know June, uh, is that his um, conversion kits are very easy to put together, right? some of the best fitting pieces that you can let me see if I can zoom I can let's focus on it um let me zoom out there we go uh, like some of the detail on this thing is great um very easy to put together um not a lot of uh not a lot of cleanup needed but still had some cleanup like knobs and stuff right um and this is kind of a, another kit that I would say is a, a good beginner resin conversion kit so uh, you know again this is just another detail kit right it doesn't it doesn't change a lot of the it doesn't change a lot of the proportions or anything like that but just changes detail um i'm, I'm starting to think that this trouble toys one is is even easier than this like it's, it's this thing is stupidly easy uh i not i mean again if you want if you want to get started on resin kits RG new Saz uh, the RG Sazabi and the new Gundam, I guess now, uh, are very easy kits to kind of put together. So, but yeah. So uh, let's let's catch up with the chat real quick. Um, <clears throat> uh, so uh, Sam L says, I'd say you probably don't make a ton of profit off some of these things when you take into consideration Im uh, importation and such. Uh, Chadameka Tim says profit margin tangent, uh, and uh, Hasaki Art says uh, like occasionally Tim. I'm not sure what that was in reply to. Um, Z says uh, I know on occasion holidays the discount is usually usually fifteen to twenty percent at uh, USA Gun Store, uh, and Tim says ah well stores do run those every now and then, but keep in mind that the average profit margin for a store is around about forty percent before expenses. Right, and then, you know, that's before, uh, before expenses. So it's already a ve quite a low profit margin. And I kind of know, like, the, um, um, the, for these, for these conversions, these resin kits, I know the, uh, like, the wholesale cost for them and how much they're sold to us. It's, and it's not a very big margin, like, it's very difficult to um to, to gain a profit from these so uh yeah it's um i mean and, and i think that's why and even like their holiday specials like you know they're counting more on the amount of orders uh to help them break even so i think that's why um it's uh it's it's definitely um you, you, you know that's it's i think that that would be one of the bigger reasons and again, you know, we're all, you're also trying to support like the resin designer too, right? So, you know, they're they're, they're putting in the time and, and the effort to recast these things, making the molds for them. I mean, not in that order. You're making the molds for them and recasting these things, and then um, you know, paying for all the resin and, and all of the silicon to, to make these molds. And then uh, you know, the mold only has such a, a, a very long kind of uh, life cycle use, and then uh, it's. Um, you know, it's, it, and then it's destroyed essentially, and then you have to make it again. But you know, who knows what what's happened to your original uh, your original model when you when you made the the mold? So, it's 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 a it's a trade off. It's definitely a trade off, and and um, you know you kind of want to make sure that you're supporting the the designer, but you you know you don't want to break the bank, obviously. So it's it's kind of a, a balance thing there. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Z says mine is delayed again. 
delayed due to missing parts. Uh, are you talking about the 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 RG new conversion? Is he or I don't know. Um, Benkia yeah says uh, again. I'm really sorry for <laughs> I'm butchering your name, man. That's <laughs> Uh, I think Trouble Toys is making RG Sazabi conversion also. Uh, yes, uh, I believe so. I know the 51 uh, is making one. Um, and it's it's essentially the same mold as the Simpro version. So um, look out for that. Uh, Handron says, uh, Wow, Chris, that looks sweet. Where is the pictures of that? Um, it is on uh, Instagram, I believe. Uh, I took a, photo, a couple of photos of these. So the RG, news, uh, the RG Sazabi conversion... Um, I did for uh, June to preview the conversion before it was released, uh, and then uh, I, I had sent it to him, and he he took it to a GVWC event over in Richmond, I want to say Richmond, Virginia. Um, I took a couple of photos of it. It took about nine days to complete. That's how easy and uh, very how well put together that thing was. So um, uh, if you can, uh, you know, give it a look. Uh, <clears throat> Let me see. Yeah. So Kyle says, uh, gives you time to work on your horseman build, Z. Uh, yes, Z. You have a lot of the stuff that needs working, um, like your Providence New conversion. Get to it. Uh, <clears throat> Juan Ferreira says, I want to build the Stein HG with the Madworks footwatch so that so they got the kit and edge set, so 10% would make it a better purchase. Yeah, Juan. Definitely. Um, you know, uh, Zach and, and Galactic Toys are, are, are you know, great people, local business. Um, you know, definitely support them. Um, they are, they're always trying to, um, to bring hard to get things, uh, usually that you usually have to order overseas here. So, uh, you know, finishes paint, uh, I believe no one has in the U.S. Um, the, uh, Troubles Toys, this, tr this, this kit, this conversion kit, um, I don't think anybody has stateside, uh, except them. So, uh, you know, they're, they're definitely trying, and, um, you know, uh, they definitely need the support, especially you know uh, this time, uh, the, uh, this these trying times. Um, <clears throat> uh, ben Ket Yap says uh, or asks or another bloody question: uh, What do you think the Trouble Toys RG New Gundam conversion versus Stickler Studios Dynamics conversion? So, um, two very different conversions. Uh, firstly, um, so the uh, the Dynamics MG, uh, which is uh, actually at Galactic Toys right now. Um, so if you guys, oh, well. The, can't really go there right now but uh, once this whole thing is over you guys can hit over there and check it out um, was uh, oh God the fitting for that was challenging at times like the shoulders I'm trying to I'm trying to remember everything the shoulders the torso um, and the the feet were a challenge so uh, and the feet were kind of like your usual resin challenge because it had the C clip uh, resin and uh, you know we all like whenever it comes to to C clips and resin I mean none of that ever works so uh, it was very loose uh, wouldn't stand so that needed fixing um, the the frame needed modification on the shoulders just because uh, they were too thick the inner frame was too thick so this this kind of uh, thing on the on the on the RG new if you zoom in here like this border right here was too thick uh, on the inner frame so that uh, and it wouldn't fit on the uh, the dynamics uh, shoulders so that needed some modifying and, and fixing um, for that uh, so overall right now in terms of fit like the RG new is is I mean I've only put the shoulders together so far so who knows what the rest of the kit is because uh, we're <laughs> we're being a little bit uh, we're procrastinating a little bit here and answering some questions um, but the, uh, the RG New has it beat on fit right now. Uh, detail wise, um, I think right now the Dynamis, um, is a little bit better, but then again, that's also a 1 100 kit, so it had more room. Um, also, not a lot of people know this, but the R, the MG Dynamis conversion is a 3D printed resin kit. Um, so it had a lot of, a lot of lines that needed fixing, a lot of 3D lines. Um, and so that that needed a lot more surface prep than your regular resin kit, um, and this, so far from what I can tell, does not have that issue. Um, it, this could be just because this is this was pre-cleaned before uh, before I even opened it, so um, it was pre-cleaned at the factory. 
Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, but I'm not seeing any kind of print lines on this, so who knows. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, Banquet, yep, says it's the same kind of resin. Yeah, it's, it is the same kind of resin. That, it's the same orange resin that they both use. So um, right now it's like, I, I, you know, in terms of, of fit, I give the RG new. In terms of detail, I give the Dynamas. Um, however, the Dynamas did also have the print lines, which wasn't cleaned up. And this is pre cleaned, so who knows. Uh, creeping free, freely for you too, uh, Baby J. Pabby, what's up? Hi, it's me. Uh, and then uh, Juan Ferreira says, Did Simpro repackage DL decals? Because I don't see how you got the exact same. Because uh, I don't see how you got the exact same decals. Um, so initially, uh, Simpro um, essentially had to deal with, with the same decal manufacturer as DL decals to redistribute certain types of decals. Um, I believe he's using a different company now. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but um, I believe the RG Sazabi decals were the same, yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Z asks, another related question, is that the RG new kit? I have the same one. Are you, are you talking about the conversion or are you talking about the RG new? I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, Banquet. Uh, yep says I did notice some of the panel lines are a bit jagged um, on which kit on which piece like if um, I'm not 100% sure which piece uh, you're talking about so we, if you feel like some of the, the stuff is jagged I can take a look and then we can compare like see which one is not as neat as it should be okay. so uh, <clears throat> let's, let's, uh, let's continue here um, so usually so another thing I usually do before I even do a snap fit is um, I wash the kit. Uh, usually, I you know I, I use a degreaser called. Um, I don't know the name of it now. Uh, Z three hundred five. Is that three hundred five? Uh, thank you, Tim, for that recommendation. By the way. Um. Yeah. So yeah, we gotta figure. I got. Um. That's what I usually do. But for this, since it is pre-cleaned, I haven't done that as of yet, and we'll do so after I I rescribe the lines and I I sand the details or sand the details, sand the surfaces. Um, another thing I also usually do is I do a parts count. So I, uh, with instructions, I usually, you, usually th these things come with instructions, but this thing is so simple, you, it doesn't require it. Um, but it usually has like a, a parts uh, layout, um, either at the front or at the back. Um, actually, I have, let me see if I can pull it up on for you guys here. I have it somewhere. I guess we could see if let's see if the amazing the Studio Maniac uh, Double Zeta instructions have it. So let's zoom out in here real quick. There we go. Focus up. So usually they have like this layout thing, right? So they have a layout of all the pieces that make up each part. So this is the torso. You've got like a, a number system here, um, you know, and so on. And I would look at that, make sure that I have the same amount or the same number, and then I take it out. But you know, it's just a parts list check. Um, so this doesn't have it, so I can't, I can't really do that. So you know, I guess if once if we come across anything that's missing, uh, we can either a contact, you know, uh, Trouble Toys or Galactic and see if we can get a replacement, or b we can just make, we can make our own details. So. <clears throat> Uh, Hasaki Art uh, Handron says, so the decals are legit. Uh, unlike the random companies on eBay that misspelled Hyakushiki to Hyakushiri. Yes. Um, so, here, let me grab one of the 
one of the newer uh, Simpro uh, decals. Uh, I know they're not Mecha decals, Tim. Uh, don't get mad. Uh, so there's more than one company there. So uh, here is the Penelope um, decals. So this is the the light version, um, which people don't like. But yeah, so you can see that the packaging is totally different. So these are technically uh, no longer DL decals. Um, I believe this is a Evolution Studio. So, um, but they, uh, if we zoom in, you can see it's not your regular Chinese misspelled decals. It does say Penelope. Um, it looks like it's all spelled correctly. Uh, so, yeah, looks uh, looks slightly different. So, just uh, that should be. It looks okay. So. Uh, Kyle says, uh, "I love how the higher quality resin kits have the fancy manual with the kit. You know what? Like some of the some of the the, the higher level resin kits, like not level, but like high quality uh, kits. Like for example, Ujel Land. I think I usually set as an example. So here's like this. It, this isn't even the the uh, instruction manual. This is the color scheme guide. So if you wanted to not do a custom color scheme and just follow like this." This layout, um, it gives you, it gives you like the, what they used color-wise. Um, granted, it's not in English, which kind of sucks, but you can kind of determine what needs it, right? So here's like a, the, your regular kind of Xia color scheme, um, and then you have your not so regular color scheme with the the gold and the, the more gold and white than blue. Um, but it gives you that that information as well. So if you wanted to build this thing, but not have to think about what colors and what kind of ratios and mix to, you have to do. You know, it has that. So some of those, you know, some of the fancier ones usually have it. So uh, Land usually knock it out of the park, with not only in terms of packaging, but but with instructions too. So it's pretty. I want to say pretty spectacular, but um, I don't think they've been topped yet. So the only other company that that uh, that topped them in terms of packaging was Infinite Dimension, and it, it's. Um, Yuja Land is essentially was Infinite Dimensions designer for a while, so you can see where the quality is coming from. So there you go. Okay, so let's do the arms real quick here. So there's not a lot of pieces for the arms. Um, so I believe it's just the one piece. So we can even just keep, leave this on. I can even take this piece and we just slide it on top. And look at that. Like I mean, that's you know pretty easy. Um, Juan Ferreira says, sorry Juan, let me just, I'm trying to fix the focus here. Uh, I'm waiting for Anchor, uh, Anchor T to drop that paint. I want to see if it's any good. So Anchor T um, and Yujiao Land uh, are, I don't want to see the same person, but it's it's the same company. Um, that paint is already available, um, but you can only currently get it in China. Uh, so, um, it's not available stateside, uh, and it's very hard to, to import it, um, even before all of this stuff that's going on in the world happened. Uh, so, um, <laughs> just good luck, man. <laughs> it's very, it's very hard to get, so, if you can get it, man, then, you know, go for it, but right now it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty tough. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and remove this guy. Let's install this too. Actually, you know, before we do that, let's just remove this frame of one because it'll just make things easier because we need to replace this piece anyway. But yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a ton of new uh, conversion kits coming out soon. Uh, I'm not sure if, um, if there's going to be any kind of delay. Uh, you know, it's, it's very hard to, uh, it's very hard to say at this point. Um, but uh, there's a ton of new resin kits announced and, and has been in, have been in development for a, a good amount of time now. Um, you know, stuff like the uh, the amazing cost stuff. Uh, I believe it's the GP03, I believe that's, that's coming out. There's a GP03 coming out. There is a, um, for all the uh, Fate Stay Night fans, there's a uh, an armored thing coming out. I can't remember her name. Um, but she's like the saber 
Alma, I don't know. Um, so there's there's quite a few that's that's on its way, as well as um, obviously Yuja Land's uh, High New, which is amazing, which is what I'm technically uh, hoping you know, waiting for. Uh, there's also uh, oh goodness, uh, there is a I can't remember the Aether's uh, cro Crossbone X1 and regular Crossbone Full Cloth uh, that's coming out. So there's you know there's there, there's no short uh, there's no shortage of, of, of new things on its way, but like I said, with all the things that's happening right now, it's hard to tell which is which is uh, when it, when any of these are, are releasing. So here's here's a completed arm, a snap fitted arm. Good grief, um, not exactly difficult. So let's do the second one real quick. Uh, you know, we're we're, we're kind of we're at, we're at a good time. Uh, One fifty eight. Um, Let's make sure that this thing's good on that. We're good. All right. And let's just uh, let's disassemble this guy again. Yeah, nice and simple. Um, <clears throat> Hasaki Art, uh, aka Hendren, says, uh, "Is G System still in business? I know for a while they were pumping out resin kits and also plastic frames like every day. Uh, G System currently is defunct. Like they're not currently making anything. So anything that." Anything that's G system uh, stuff that's coming out is either a recast or um, something like an older thing that someone is reselling. Uh, they haven't come out with anything new in uh, quite some time, so yeah. Like I know the you know the one sixty camphor and all that stuff is is pretty amazing, uh, very expensive, mind you, but but amazing. Uh, but um, yeah, they haven't come out with anything new in a very long time. Okay. Let me place this guy. You can see how fast this is. Um, you know, once you once you kind of get an understanding of resin kits, like it's it's very simple. And obviously, the sensor thing is is already pretty simple in itself. Um, yeah, it's just nice and quick. It's two arms, man. Like, no problem. All right. So what should we do next? Uh, so the big, a big bulk of the details that I've noticed, anyway, is is the legs and feet. Um, also, you know what? I think I'm also missing the head. So that's something we might need to talk about. Hmm. So usually, I know this thing, like this conversion kit usually has a head, because um, here's the regular RG new head, um, which is fine, um, but uh, it's it's kind of squished. So it's it's so the the MG uh, new Verka, uh has like that long that longer face, and I actually do prefer that. And this conversion kit. Uh, should come with a head, uh, but I don't see it. So we, we might have to, uh, we might have to talk to uh, Zach uh, at Galactic Toys about that, and we'll we'll f we'll figure all that stuff out. So, but yeah. So uh, I think this would be a good spot to kind of to kind of uh, to call it. Um, let me zoom out here, and then let's transition back to. Uh, my face. Let me see my transition. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I yeah. So let's um. That's I've never. That's dude. I yeah. Let's uh. It's cool. Uh. So Kyle. Uh. Aka Google is unpopular. Says, when building a resin kit for yourself, do you use all the parts provided, or choice to? Ex or I guess he means choose to exclude some parts and add your own details to the stock parts instead. Uh, yes, um, so <clears throat> uh, it it completely depends on on the conversion kit, right? So um, there are uh, some something there are some builds that I've done, like for example the let's see 
I want to say the Extreme Squad Barbatos and the um, Lab Zero Barbatos Lupus Rex um, is uh, like those two um, had parts that I chose not to use and just modified the original pl plastic pieces. So um, for the uh, EXS Lupus, the Extreme Squad Lupus, I replaced the um, the pistons on the the shoulder with um, with a scratch built version of my own just because I felt like the ones that they provided was a bit too small and then the lab zero one uh, there were pieces on the legs on the back of the legs that I felt uh, I could I could probably make look oh, I could probably make something nicer or a little more detailed that the uh, conversion kit had that I didn't quite like um, so yeah I you know you don't have to use every single piece um, it's it's I think it's uh, I think it's cool if you are able to, if you think you can add more details to the resin kit, then do it. I think you should do it. Uh, ben Cat Rap says, uh, Trouble Toys quality control is kind of bad. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, a lot of these resin kit companies, quality control is not, I wouldn't say A-class. Um, they're definitely, they, they definitely could be better. Um, they could, uh, they could, could do I mean some of these places are just a one-man operation right so quality control um, it, it's easy to overlook things it's easy to, to miss stuff out uh, and you know and the only thing you can really do is is either contact them or the place that you bought these from uh, bought, bought your, your conversion kit from and uh, it's pretty easy to, to get pieces that are missing if you're missing anything um, or you know like um, just just get a whole new kit uh, sent to you uh, as a replacement so it's um it's not it's common to, to have issues but it's very easy to fix uh if needed so i think that's a i think that's a good compromise i mean obviously better quality control overall uh quality control is better um but uh you know at least it's at least it's easy to rectify. So um, I'm gonna contact uh, Galactic Toys or Zach um, at some point later today, or maybe maybe tomorrow, <laughs> um, and uh, we'll we'll get the head head stuff figured out. Um, and then uh, yeah, so uh, I think yeah, let's 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 call it here for now. Um, I, what I'll do is I won't touch this conversion kit um, until the next stream. Uh, so we'll you know hopefully if you guys have it or. We'll, you guys want to get it uh, you know you guys can build this along with me if you want to um, and uh, you know we'll, we'll continue on where we left off uh, on next Saturday uh, you know we'll, uh, we'll I'll make sure that you guys see all of the stuff I do to this thing I'm not gonna build anything behind the scenes or anything um, this will be a, a nice kind of almost like a back burner build for me just with, with so many projects going on um, kind of the prior priority number one right now is definitely the SD build so the Sinaju and the Zion um, will definitely be completed very soon uh, just because uh, I want to get it done and then I want to get Tim off my back <laughs> uh, and then we'll, 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 we'll figure this out um, we'll, we'll, you know, I'll make sure that you guys see everything that I do to this uh, Banquet Yep says, uh, so far, Extreme Squad and Ujia Land is still better. feel like these quality control kind of leave a bad taste in your mouth for buyers. It is. It is um, It is kind of like a, a a negative that I give to, to garage kits. Just, and, you know, but I also kind of have to be a little bit understanding just because it's it's just a, a small operation. So it, it, it's kind of like a given. But, you know, it, it's... Um, well, you, you'll definitely... Uh, you can, they can definitely help you correct any kind of issues you have. So, uh, you know, definitely um, contact them if, you ha if you're having trouble or if you're having issues with, with their products. And most of the time, they'll help you out. But, yeah, so anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining me. Um, it's, been, it's been a blast. Um, we'll, uh, I'll add, hopefully we can, we can improve the stream some more. Um, I've, I, you know, I hear... I hear um, I, I've noted your your audio suggestions. Um, I will definitely fix these uh, these issues soon. Um, hopefully, we won't have to use this for much longer. Um, I'm hoping a mic will, will make its way to me at some point. 
uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up, uh, we'll catch up again on Saturday. We'll, we'll, we'll continue, uh, we'll, I'll continue an update on the Sinanju because obviously I'm going to keep working on that and the Zeong, uh, and then we'll pick up where we left off with the, uh, with the RG new. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I will be back, uh, goodness, um, I'll be back on Friday for Mechanisms. Hopefully, you know, hopefully I'll be there. But I will definitely be back here uh, next Saturday, uh, 7 Central, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. Uh, and we'll pick up where we left off with the RG New. And uh, you guys will see how far I've gotten, I've gotten with this in Um But yeah, so thank you for joining me. And uh, I will see you guys uh, next week. Thank you and take care. <laughs>